Jellyfish This jellyfish is potentially one of the largest predatory invertebrates in the world, yet has rarely been observed. Being seen only 110 times in 110 years between 1899 and 2009, there is not a lot of data about this fascinating species. So let's see what we can find out about this huge and mesmerizing jellyfish. The phantom jelly is massive, sporting a bell more than a meter across and with four arms that are up to 30 meters long. These tentacles look like ribbons and are often described as paddle-like due to how they flutter through the water. The best way to understand and even define jellyfish is to compare jellyfish genomes against the genomes of other cnidarians containing sufficiently divergent genes and proteins. As jellyfish and other cnidarians such as hydra and corals are evolutionarily very distant, it's easy to compare them phenotypically. However, at this level, it's difficult to pinpoint the precise genetic variations that make jellyfish jellyfish-like. Fortunately, there have been numerous cnidarian genomes published and we have detected protein domains, genes, and pathways that are specific enough to define jellyfish genetically. In order to compare jellyfish genomes, one needs to find some jellyfish. And in this respect, we've been lucky that there are many gigantic jellyfish floating around in the warm southern coast of Korea. These giants, up to 2 meters across and weighing 200 kilograms, are called Namura's jellyfish, sometimes considered a foodstuff in Japan, also dangerous and sometimes even lethal, and often hated by Korean fishermen and fisherwomen. Until recently, Namura's jellyfish was found mostly around Yellow Sea and South China Sea, which now spreads far down to South Pacific. Perhaps due to global warming and overfishing swordfish and tuna, Namura's jellyfish are now flourishing in the waters of Korea and the East Sea. Currently, there are seven cnidarian genomes that have been published. We focused on interpreting the function of jellyfish using the genetic differences as they have a morphologically distinct difference. From genomic comparisons, we've also found that jellyfish genomes seem to have adaptations to cellular chemical homeostasis and sodium ion transport functions than any other cnidarian. This makes sense as noted previously because they have to travel far to catch prey both vertically and horizontally in water. Jellyfish are not smart and they don't have a brain, an eye, or other sensory organs. They only have small sensory structures around their distinctively round bells. These sensory structures are known as ropalia. Jellyfish use its ropalia and nervous system, nerve net, to identify light and odor. Compared with bilaterian animals such as human, fruit fly, and zebrafish, we found that a large number of sensory receptor-related gene families were reduced in jellyfish as with other cnidarian species. Jellyfish catch prey using their tentacles. They're also an important defense mechanism. In order to deliver their infamous sting, they've evolved specialized structures called nematocysts. They have thousands of nematocysts in each of thousands of nidocytes on their tentacles, which deliver thousands of tiny doses of venom when stimulated. Typical jellyfish venoms include phospholipase A2 and metalloproteases, and indeed we found many venom-related protein domains and genes as befits an active predator. When Jellyfish Attack it sounds like something out of an old Godzilla movie. Giant sea monsters have invaded Japanese waters. They're 6 feet long and weigh up to 450 pounds. They've wreaked havoc on the country's fishing industry and inflicted at least a few deadly stings on humans. They were even responsible for temporarily shutting a nuclear power plant after they lodged in its cooling system. These creatures were jellyfish, which the Japanese call Ikaizen Kuragi. Some experts blame the influx of jellyfish on heavy rains in China, which they say drove the sea creatures into Japanese waters. Fortunately, the Japanese have found a use for many of the enormous jellyfish they've caught. Dried salted jellyfish, anyone? The jellyfish stings the thing. Jellyfish are carnivores. They eat other animals. Smaller jellyfish eat algae and other tiny plankton called zooplankton. Larger jellyfish eat crustaceans and other bigger aquatic animals. They don't seek out people to attack. Their nervous system is too simple to do that. Their sting is both a defense mechanism and a way to capture their prey. Each jellyfish tentacle is covered with thousands of cells called mitoblasts, which house nematocysts containing stinging threads. When a jellyfish encounters another object, pressure inside the nematocyst causes the threads to uncoil. 
The stinging cells spring out at the unwitting victim like tiny darts, firing venom into it. The venom is a neurotoxin designed to paralyze jellyfish prey. Although a jellyfish can kill a small aquatic animal, its sting is not usually fatal to humans. It tends to cause pain, skin rashes, fever, and muscle cramps. The degree of pain and reaction to a jellyfish sting can depend on the species. Larger jellyfish have larger cytoplasts that can penetrate deeper into the skin, and some jellyfish have stronger venom than others. When you're at the beach, watch out for jellyfish both on the water and on the sand. Even a tentacle that has been separated from its jellyfish can sting. If you do get stung, first remove any tentacles clinging to the skin. Don't wash the area with fresh water, it could release more venom into your body. Instead, clean it with rubbing alcohol, ammonia, vinegar, or urine. Yes, you read that right. You can also apply meat tenderizer or a mixture of baking soda and water. Any signs of an allergic reaction, shortness of breath, hives, wheezing, warrant immediate medical attention. Jellyfish have excellent protection against predators, their stinging tentacles are a strong deterrent, and their transparent bodies help them hide. A few animals such as loggerhead turtles, sunfish, and spadefish eat jellyfish. Some young fish actually live on or even in jellyfish. They hide out in the tentacles to avoid being eaten by predators until they mature. And some people, especially in China and Japan, also eat jellyfish, considering them a delicacy. Aside from their occasional stings, jellyfish are not generally a nuisance. But in recent years, certain parts of the world, namely Japan, Australia, and Europe, have seen a problematic increase in jellyfish populations. Scientists believe the increase in jellyfish numbers may have to do with additional nutrients in the water, climate change, or fishing along the coastlines. Dramatic population increases are called blooms. Some researchers are concerned that the increased numbers of jellyfish could compete for food resources with fish and other marine animals and eventually bump out native local species. In large numbers, jellyfish also wreak havoc with local fishing industries by tearing holes in fishing nets and disrupting other fish populations. Jellyfish do best in their natural environment, but many aquariums have jellyfish tanks. People who capture and raise them in captivity must be very careful not to damage their fragile bodies. It's easier to collect jellyfish in the polyp stage when they're less vulnerable. Ideally, they should be in a tank free from any sharp corners or obstacles on which they could hurt themselves. In addition, the water needs to have some flow to it because jellyfish primarily move with currents. Box Jellyfish This jellyfish looks like a square with its four sides, hence the name box. This subclass of 16 jellyfish species includes the sea wasp. Box jellyfish tend to gravitate towards the mouths of rivers and creeks, and their sting is very painful. People who have unwittingly been stung can experience intense muscle cramps and difficulty breathing. Deep Sea Jellyfish The name of this type of jellyfish says it all. Deep sea jellyfish live in very deep waters as far as 23,000 feet below the ocean's surface. They're usually dark colored, brown, violet, or black. Irukandji jellyfish. Irukandji are a type of box jellyfish found in Australia. Although they're small, their venom is extremely toxic. This type of jellyfish has cytoplasts on its body as well as its tentacles. The Irukandji sting is so painful and causes such severe symptoms that scientists have given them a name, Irukandji syndrome. Symptoms include high blood pressure, vomiting, headaches, extreme cramping and pain, and a burning sensation. Irukandji syndrome can last up to two weeks, and there's no antidote. Doctors have found that magnesium infusions can bring some relief, but the syndrome can be fatal. Climate change and resulting warmer sea temperatures favor most jellyfish species, and water temperatures of the seas around Japan have definitely increased in recent decades. Higher water temperatures both speed jellyfish reproduction and extend the reproductive season. Swimming jellyfish reproduce sexually, giving birth to larvae that settle on the ocean bottom to become polyps from which many more jellyfish butt off. Warming temperatures result in more polyps. Scientists who don't believe that jellyfish are increasing worldwide cite the case of the Bering Sea near Alaska, where the jellyfish population grew rapidly during the 1990s, when temperatures were moderate. Peaked in 2000 at 40 times the 1982 level, 
then began to decline even as sea temperatures rose. But a 2008 study suggested that food sources influenced the Bering Sea jellyfish decline. Overfishing favors jellyfish because it eliminates their predators, they have very few anyway, and competitors. Jellyfish also benefit when forage fish, such as herring and sardines, are harvested for aquaculture fish meal because forage fish normally compete with them for zooplankton. Agricultural, animal waste, and sewage runoff loads coastal waters with nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which cause eutrophication where algae proliferate then die robbing the water of oxygen. Eutrophication provides more food for jellyfish polyps and favors jellyfish and polyps over fish because they can tolerate low oxygen levels. In addition, eutrophication clouds the water, which makes it harder for fish, who are visual feeders, to feed while jellyfish don't rely on sight to feed. Human coastal development has also helped jellyfish thrive. The structures and construction that we've placed in the water, such as piers, marinas, oil platforms, artificial reefs, refuse, rubble, aquacultural pens, and structures, etc., provide an abundance of habitats for polyps to settle on. Jellyfish flourish around aquaculture, where extra fish feed and fish waste produce eutrophication, and pens and structures provide polyp habitats. In addition, each year the Chinese and Malaysians, who regard jellyfish as an epicurean delicacy, release millions of tiny baby jellyfish into the waters to later harvest. The introduction of alien species via ballast water in ships, the aquarium trade, or through changing ocean currents caused by climate change have often resulted in large jellyfish blooms because non-native species can thrive in areas where they have no competitors or predators. And overfishing and climate variation contribute to the Black Sea's jellyfish blooms.